Hi everyone. So, um, all set to do a recording here. Uh, I did have some issues with my microphone, but all that's fixed right now. Uh, so let's see, let's see how far we can get before something else screws up and I have to re-record the whole damn thing again. <laughs> Anyways, um, so last week we talked a little bit about doing deploys and GitHub. This week, uh, we are going to do some more of that just because I know people kind of got stuck and it was a little tricky for them. Uh, so I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I'm recording this lesson not at the school uh, because it makes it easier sometimes when we're not getting interrupted with troubleshooting and stuff like that for everybody to kind of just follow along step by step. In addition, I'm also going to release a cheat sheet that basically walks you through the steps of creating a new repository, adding new um, items to the repository, also resetting things like when you forget to do something, how to solve that issue. So I'm going to give you a nice GitHub cheat sheet or a Git cheat sheet that will make that a little easier for you, as well as a Heroku cheat sheet that's just basically a step-by-step -step how to create a new pipeline and, and deploy. Um, none of these are going to have images. If you want the images, they're already there underneath the lesson plans, so please feel free to take a look at those under the scm.education. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So. Before we actually get into the Heroku and Git stuff, I want to talk about what today's lesson is about, which is include and require, which is a super, super important concept to understand in PHP. Um, basically, because PHP is a pre-processing language, uh, include and require help bring out the power of PHP so we don't have to duplicate even common HTML elements. We can just add them to a file and include the file wherever we need to use it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how why that is. So in computer programming, as always, our goal is to try to be dry, right? Don't repeat yourself as much as possible. So this is because we want to have a better maintainable, testable set of code um, for any application that we're building. And we do this by utilizing things like variables, functions, classes, and what you're going to learn today, um, file content inclusion. So the include and require commands that come in PHP, these are fairly common. They're available in many different languages. Um, some languages handle this a little differently than PHP does, though. Uh, for example, JavaScript actually um, parses the code and then puts in the results of whatever the results are going to be from the code. So uh, if you have functions, you need to return from it, stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't just take the code and plop it in like PHP or... Um, C++ does, or C Sharp, or sorry, yeah, C++ or C does. Um, so PHP, basically what it does is it just takes the contents, like the physical contents of the file, copies them from the file, pastes them wherever you call the include, and then it just, then they're available to you right away. So to kind of understand that, I've drawn a bit of a diagram. So this is Tom, and Tom's made a request for index.php. Index.php's content is only this one paragraph tag, that's it, with the words my content in it. However, we know that an HTML page requires the top of the HTML page, the HTML tag, the head tag, the body tag, and then a closing HTML tag in order for it to be valid and pass the W3C validation. So what we've done here is we're including the contents that we need above the index.php, so this content here in this paragraph, we're including it in this header.php, and then we just can call include or require uh, header.php above our content, and this content will immediately be put right here because it just copies the content and pastes it in place. Same with the footer because we have to close these things out. Oh, there's a bit of a typo there. That should be slash body. Um, so that'll put that in, and the end result will be this concept here. So this will be our response that actually finally goes back to Tom when we're done. So as you can see, it's a blend of all three files um, and it's a nice HTML page that would be considered valid. So include and include once. Include, there's actually four different things. There's include, include once, require, and require once. And they all basically operate the same way. They all copy code and paste it in place wherever they're called. The differences is some subtle functional differences. So for example, include can be called as many times as you want. Require can be called as many times as you want for the same file. 
and it will just keep copying and pasting the same content over and over again. Uh, include once and require once, however, even if you call them 10 times for the same file, they will only actually display the content once. So they won't duplicate over and over again. So this is good if we're trying to include a file that contains like functions that we have in a library or maybe just um, like a connection script or something like that. Something that we only want to do at one time um, and we don't want to happen multiple times. So I have created some starter files for us to work with that we'll pull down and use uh, in order for us to uh, kind of see how this concept works. So if you go to the PHP um, dashboard, I don't know what you call this thing, shell? I think that they call it a shell. And then we'll go to weekly learning. And then lesson six includes a normalization. And then we're going to click on the starter files here. And that's going to download to our downloads directory. And then I'm going to go to the downloads. And I can see it in here. And I'm just going to delete the OBS that I reinstalled. I'm going to right click on the file. I'm going to click on the file first, then right click on the file and choose to extract all. So now I don't want all of, like what will happen if I extract to this lesson six, I'll wind up with files within a file or sorry, files within a folder within a folder, which is kind of annoying. So I'm just going to extract it directly to downloads, click extract, and there we go. And then I'm going to delete the zip file. Then I'm going to rename this file. So I'm going to click on it, right click, rename lesson-06, and I'm going to cut it from the downloads folder going to open up WAMP, it's going to take a second to boot, go red, orange, green, there we go, then I'm going to click on the W and go to the www directory, and I'm going to delete the folder that I created Monday, and I'm going to paste my lesson six in here. All right. If you somehow got lost, just uh, go back in time a little bit on the scrub bar and and rewatch it. <laughs> the joys of YouTubing our video lesson means that you can just shift back and forth in time if you get lost. All right. So then I'm going to right click on this and choose to open with code. And there we go, there's our folder. All right, so in the examples folder that's in here, you'll see two examples that we're gonna accomplish today. One is called includes and requires, and one is called normalizing paths. Normalizing paths is a little bit more in depth and will also recover includes and requires for us, but also as well, we'll do the GitHub and Heroku um, piece in there as well. The includes and requires, if you open it up, there's a whole bunch of files in here, but the only one we really care about is index.php. So I'm going to open up the index.php, and you're going to see it's nicely blank. And uh, I want to see this in our actual browser, so I'm going to open up the browser, navigate to localhost, slash comp-1006, click on lesson 6, click on examples, Click on includes and requires. And the index.php will be the file that loads automatically because uh, if Apache can't find, like if there's no directly starting file um, indicated in the URL, like you haven't put the, direct, the file in here, like, I don't know, maybe you did underscore config or something like that. If there's nothing up there, by default, it looks for an index file. It will first check for an index.php because we're using an index or we're using a PHP server. Um, otherwise, it will look for the index.html file and then index.htm. So there's a few different options it will try to look for. Uh, but anyway, so this is loading the PHP file that we just saw. And as you can see, there's nothing in it. And we're going to fill in a few of these. I don't think we're going to cover require because it's exactly the same as include. The only difference between require and include is that require will throw a fatal error if it can't find the file. 
whereas include will only throw a warning. Uh, but I know for some of you, it doesn't seem to matter. If you get a warning or a fatal error, it seems to screw up Heroku entirely and you get nothing on the screen. So I, I, I think we'll just handle that issue anyways, and then it doesn't really matter which one you use. All right, I'm going to kill my Slack so it doesn't keep opening up here. Cool. Okay, so we have includes and requires. Include me a bunch of times. So we're just going to type a small little bit of code here. So we'll add a PHP block. And I'm going to create a for loop. And we haven't created one of these, but they should seem familiar because you probably have created them in other languages. Basically, it takes three expressions. Uh, the first is your instantiation of your variable. The second is your conditional check. And then the third is your incrementer or decrementing uh, expression. All right. Uh, and then inside here, we're going to just write our include. So it's just the word include and then the path to the file. And we're going to use a relative path. So this dot means in the directory that this file is currently in. And then the slash and then the file name. So the file name we're going to include is include me a lot.php, which makes sense. There we go. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and alt tab out to our browser, hit control R, and we can say that this is the song that doesn't end. It goes on and on, my friend, because some people started singing it and not knowing what it was, and then they'll continue singing it forever just because, and it keeps repeating, and you can sing that song if you want to. I doubt you do. All right, so include me only once, basically the same code that we just wrote up there. So for, oh, helps if we create a PHP block. So another for loop, dollar sign $i equals zero, dollar sign $i is less than five, dollar sign $i plus plus. Okay, so it's a loop, and it will iterate, obviously, five times. We're going to include, and for now, we'll just include... Uh, we won't write include once, we'll write include, and we'll include me once, is the name of the file. Include me once dot php. Go, and with the include, if you look, it still will iterate five times and produce the statement five times. But if we change it from include to include underscore once jump back and hit control R, you can see now it only actually outputs one time. The statement will be processed five times, but because we've already copied the contents and pasted them in, there's no reason to do it again. That's what the whole underscore once does. So it will stop it from outputting another four more times, right? So we only get it the five times. So these are very important to understand these two concepts. One other thing I would like to cover with this as well is the include me if I exist and this has more to do with the error that some of you were getting where it wasn't really an error it was a warning telling you that the file didn't exist and it was causing your pages to fall it shouldn't fail the page but for some reason it does so we're going to accomplish that now what we're going to do is we're going to write a PHP block here and we're going to write an include sorry we're going to write an if File exists is the name of the function, and then it takes the path to the file. So, slash, I'm just going to write a file that isn't listed here, so I'll do asdf.php. So, if it exists, include dot slash asdf.php. Otherwise, or else, echo. No go, slow mo. Go. And if we alt tab out and we hit control R, we can see no go, slow mo. So the file didn't exist, but if we give it a file that does exist, so we'll give it a file called, uh, let's just do the include me once, because that's fine. Include me once.php and include me once, like so, and this file exists, and we hit control R, then you can see the include me once 
um, message that we're getting from the file. So this stops it that if the file doesn't exist, then it won't load it, right? So that makes it a little bit handier and you don't wind up with, you know, um, files that are basically trying to load with warnings because for whatever reason, Heroku blows up. I think it might have something to do with like a strict mode. Uh, so this stops that issue from occurring. So hopefully that makes things a little clearer. So the last one I want to talk about is nested includes. Nested includes are quite a complicated idea. It has to do with how um, include works, or include once, require, or require once. They're all the same. I'll just say includes work. It's how includes work. One of the issues with the way includes work is it copies the content and it pastes it in place, right? Because of that, if you're referencing other files using relative URLs in the uh, included file, um, you need to make sure that those references are based on the file that it's getting included in, not based on where they're currently located in their directory structure. So, for example, I tried to explain this on, um, on Monday, and I, I think I did a kind of a piss poor job at it because it's, it's kind of a complex idea, but we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to create some PHP here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to include a file that's inside this includes directories, right? So I'm going to go include. I'm going to use relative URLs. So underscore in, or yeah, includes slash include within include. Yeah, include within include. So we'll have an include within include. So in this file, I'm going to put another included file in it. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to jump out to the browser. I'm going to hit control R. And right now we have, I'm including a file outside of my folder. That's, that's all we see. So let's go see if we can cause it some damage. I'm going to open up the file include within include. And in here, I'm going to add another include. And this time it's in nested include. So most people, what they will do the first time they're starting out with web development is they'll figure that because this file is inside this includes directory and they want to access this nested includes file, they're going to move up a directory using dot dot slash and then put in the name nested includes dot PHP. So a few students in Monday understood what was going to happen and what would, why this does not work. Um, some didn't quite get it, and that's totally fine because it is a confusing concept. So if I refresh, you'll see, yet yeah, we get these huge warnings. And the reason we're getting the warnings is because the file doesn't exist there. The way to understand this, we're not accessing the file from this location. We're copying and pasting the contents of the include within include file right here and trying to attempt to access this file from here because we're moving up a directory in here what's actually happening is we're going up a directory which takes us to uh, examples and then we're looking for nested um, include inside this spot which as you can see does not exist right so this does not work this way unfortunately so what we can do leave this one in place and we'll write another include only this time we'll do nested underscore includes dot PHP with a reference to the current directory we're in. Now, one of the issues is, is if I was to go to include within include and try to run this file, I'm going to get an error because inside this directory, this includes directory, there is no nested includes. So it won't work from there. It only works from the index.php file. So if I refresh, as you can see, I get the second line, but now if I attempt to go to a underscore includes and click on include within include, I get the success message up here, and then I get the errors for the second call that I tried to do. And the reason is, is because now I'm trying to access the file from within the includes directory and it doesn't exist. So if you don't understand that, um, you don't need to worry too much because today we're going to talk about normalizing paths, which fixes this issue. This is, this is considered an issue because 
you're going to have this problem where you're trying to include a common file in different locations in different subdirectories and you're going to wind up blowing up in certain directories and not in others so it's a good idea to resolve this by normalizing your paths um, it, it's not actually good practice to even use relative urls in this scenario so we're going to fix it but that being said I would recommend understanding what happens. That way, if you do have any issues in the future, you can easily resolve them. Because this is a common, a common thing you'll see in legacy code where people have used relative URLs or relative paths, file paths. All right. So that basically sums up the includes and requires. There are other practice pieces there that if you want to try those practice pieces, you can. Uh, otherwise, we're going to move on to normalizing paths. So in your browser, what I would like you to do is I'm going to come back to examples. I'm going to click on normalizing paths, and I have created a full application that we're going to see from this point. And it's going to use your countries table. So I hope your countries table is working in your database, and I hope that you have some content in there because it's going to utilize that content to help populate our pages and we're going to go step by step through here um, i'm just going to have a drink first and then uh, we'll get right into it all right let's get started here so <clears throat> we have our normalizing paths folder here once again we're going to start on the index.php which is currently empty and we're going to go through this process of helping normalize our paths. Actually, we're not going to start here. We're going to start at underscore config.php. So what I'd like you to do in your browser, just to kind of keep up with this, is open up underscore dot, or underscore config, sorry, dot PHP. There we go. And what we're going to do in this file is we're going to create some path normalization in this file just to make our lives a little simpler. Let me just find my note here on it. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so one of the cool things that PHP actually provides us is a way to set and includes directory. And what this basically means is that we say to PHP, this is where all of our files are going to come from from our includes and then what it will do is it will immediately look within the directory that we set and always use that as its reference point no matter where we attempt to do the include even if the include is nested and calls other includes it doesn't matter as long as the files exist in the directory we define at runtime everything is good the only one issue we will have is that even though we're going to create this set inside config we need to make sure that in config is included in every file we attempt because it actually has to set it on the execution of every file. There are ways, I think, to actually set includes in more of a configuration setting, but I haven't actually got into that before. Uh, so for now, we'll just do this. <clears throat> so to, to set our config, we're going to use... Um, we have to give it an absolute URL based on where this file is currently anchored and located. And the way we can do that is we can use something called dir name. So I'm going to var dump out what that looks like. And I'll add some space in here so you can see the command. There it is. dir name requires a path of some sort, any type of path. So we're going to give it the constant file. And what the constant file is, it's actually the location of this file currently that we're in. Yeah, you know what? Let's var dump that first because that actually makes more sense. Let's let's var dump out file so you can see it. So that is underscore, underscore, file, underscore, underscore. So there's two underscores there, as you'll see. See? There's two there. So don't make the mistake of only typing one. So I'm going to var dump that out. And as you can see, here's the path the underscore config.php. The most important part of this is that it's a absolute path, meaning that it starts from the C colon directory, so from our drive directory, all the way to where the file is located. That's super important because when we're trying to access this file from any location within our system, we need that entire path value. 
The neat thing about underscore underscore file is even if we include config, this this uh, little bit of code here actually winds up getting populated before the include happens, which means that we don't have to worry about underscore underscore file picking up you know, the fact that it's been included in index.php and therefore giving the wrong path. It will always give the correct path of the file that it's been called in. So that's handy. We can actually use that to our advantage. We don't need the file location. We need the directory location. So the way we can do that is type in dir name, give it underscore file. And then what it will do is return back the directory that this file is located in. As you can see, it's located in normalizing paths. So that's super handy for us. And now we kind of have a full path name. So I'm going to create a path name to make this a little easier on us. I'm going to call this path dir name underscore underscore file underscore underscore. And then I'll just pass the var dump the dollar sign path. There we go. Refresh. Everything looks good. And then I'm going to give it our command to set the include directory. So we're going to set include path dollar sign path. Now, anytime we call include, it will always come from this directory, but we're not quite done. We need to add one more piece to this. underscore includes. So now it's always this directory. So we'll alt tab, refresh, and as you can see, there's our path. Now we have this weird slash, which is kind of annoying. We're going to need to take care of that. We found out on Monday, we had an issue where the direction of these slashes, Heroku really cares about. And that mostly has to do with the fact that it's based on, that it's Linux that it's using, and Linux actually cares about the directions. The directions of the paths all have to be facing this way and not the opposite way. It doesn't like the opposite way. So we need to actually normalize these slashes by flipping their direction. And the way we did that is we created a function called normalize slashes, which we gave it one parameter called path. And then all we did was return string replace, which is a PHP command that takes three arguments. The first argument is the needle, which is the thing that you're looking for. So the thing we're going to be looking for is slash slash. We're actually looking for slashes, but we have to escape it. We have to escape the escape, essentially. The next thing is what we're going to replace it with. So we're going to replace it with a slash in the opposite direction. And then where we're going to look for it, which is the path. So this is the needle, the thing you're looking for. This is the haystack, the place you're going to look. And then this is the thing you're going to replace the needle with once you find it. Okay? So now we're going to just change this up a little bit. We're going to normalize slashes, highlight this, and wrap it. So now it's a function around a function call, which is totally fine. I have an error here. I don't know why I have the error. That's valid. <laughs> Sorry, a bit dusty. Ah, let's try to see what that looks like. Yeah, that works. So now you can see all the slashes are in the correct direction. So we're good. So we'll use normalized slashes through the whole thing to always ensure they're in the correct direction. Windows doesn't care about the directions of the slashes, but Linux does, and so does Mac because it's Unix-based, and Linux is Unix as well. So any Unix-based system, the slashes have to be facing in that direction. Any Windows machine, it doesn't really care which direction they're facing in. So I'm going to add a note just to the top of this that basically um, sets... The includes path, and then up here, normalizes slashes Unix type. There we go. Our next piece is to set, well not set, normalize absolute URLs. 
And the biggest reason we want to do this is because when we're creating links, uh, we're going to have links reference different files within our application back and forth. However, we want to create absolute URLs to do that. Now, we're not doing absolute URLs like from localhost all the way forward. We're just making it so that the URL is basically the root of our application. Now, the root of our application is slightly different than what um, WAMP is providing us because to WAMP, the root of our application is the www directory. To us, the root of our application is normalizing paths. So we want to make sure that that's where it's anchoring to, and we can do that by using this config.php file in here. Just like we did the dir name, same scenario all over again. So the way we're going to do this, why is there an error there? That's really super weird. Anyways, the way we're going to do this, we're going to create three um, variables. The first two variables are going to be uh, different pieces of our location. And then the last variable will be the actual new link path. So one, we want to know that our document root. Like, what is the root of our actual document? So equals dollar sign underscore server document root will give us that information. And we'll var dump that out so we can see what it looks like. And we'll also do our normalize slashes because we're going to wrap everything in normalize slashes. So we'll alt tab over here, hit control R. Oh, have a, you can see I've made a spelling error there. Oh, and another one too. It's not var dumped, it's var dump. There we go. So as you can see, the root of our application, like I was saying, is the WW directory <coughs> of our uh, WAMP server, which we already knew. So now I want to get our application directory. So our application directory is really just the normalizing paths, and we can use the DR name function that we used up here in order to create that. So that's exactly what we'll do. Application root equals DR name. underscore file, underscore, underscore, and then again, we're going to want to normalize that, so we'll normalize that, normalize, slashes, did it again, I don't know why I keep doing that, there we go, and then we'll var dump it. And we'll refresh, and there we go. So now we have all of this in here, but now I want to make it so that the www is not the root of our directory. We want this to be the root of our directory, and so everything falls to that point. Uh, we also want to get rid of everything up to this slash because URLs don't begin with C colon. Uh, we, they only begin with these slashes, or you can have localhost, blah, blah, blah. That's totally valid as well. We are just going to make it kind of like a relative URL based on the root directory. So we're just going to get rid of this stuff. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to intersect this in this and basically replace it, right? So we'll just remove that piece. So it's going to look like this. Dollar sign link underscore path equals string replace. There's that function again. And we're going to take document root. So we're going to look for the C colon WAMP 64 www. We're going to replace it with null. And we're going to look for that inside application root. So we'll remove it, cut it out, and then all we'll be left with is a nice absolute URL. We'll say absolute, but it's still technically relative. Just a better relative path. And there we go. There's our nice base. So we want to actually take that and create a constant from it so that we can reference it whenever we're trying to create a URL. So we're going to create, we're going to do a define base path. So this is the name of our constant variable which is not a variable at all, it's a constant. And then we're going to give it link path as the value. And we're done. 
So now we should go through and actually comment out all the var dumps so that they aren't outputting to our page. So if I go back, hit Control R, your page should be empty now. So now we can go back to index, which is totally fine. And we have our nice uh, normalized paths. And this is going to help us with something called dry templating. So dry templating is a way for us to create a template that we're going to use all the time. So this is something visual that you see. Uh, it's a way for us to create a, a, a visual template that we're going to use uh, and then just put content in it that we want to put inside. So the way we do that is we need to extract commonalities. If we look at our index.php and we create a new HTML page, so I'll just hit exclamation, use Emmett's abbreviation, hit tab, right? And I'm going to rip out some of the stuff in here that's not necessary, so we'll take that out. We'll take this HTML language thing. Sorry, no, we won't. We need that. Uh, we'll take all this stuff and tab it in, actually. There we go. And we'll hit enter. Cool. So this top stuff here is going to wind up on every single HTML page that we have. And the bottom stuff here is going to wind up on every single HTML page we have. And it's not going to change. Um, in fact, we're actually going to add a style sheet. So why don't we do that now? We'll add the style sheet. So I'll type in link. Uh, actually, if you type in link, you have to... Whoop, why did it do that? I'm on the wrong thing, that's why. There we go. If you type in link, press down so you're on the one that says Emmet abbreviation. Hit enter and it will auto put in the style sheet one. Uh, the style sheet is located in the CSS directory. Now, I can't just go dot slash. I can't even go dot dot slash because I have an index file that we're going to put it in here, and I have this file that we're going to put it in there, and I need the URL to be absolute. So I need to include our config. So I'll do that first. So we're going to do PHP, include, and... I'll include it once because we don't need it more than once. Uh, this is relative to index, so I can actually just get away with doing dot slash underscore config.php and just use the relative path because it is relative to here. And then when I put it inside the countries one, we'll just do dot slash slash. So that's totally okay to do that. So now I need to finish off this. So this is going to look like so. I'll use a shorthand echo statement and it's base path dot or no, so actually we'll just do this. There we go. Slash, we'll just use HTML, CSS slash styles dot CSS. There we go. So this is now, this whole location will be technically wherever our full absolute URL to our application is, and then slash CSS, which is, should be this directory here, and then the style sheet right here. So it should actually create the whole URL, and this is coming from our underscore config right here, where we set our link path, right? And config is getting in here because we're including it. So if I jump back to the browser real fast, hit control R, we have no errors, um, that being said, though, you wouldn't see it unless you go to console, but you can see I've got no errors telling me that I'm missing the file. So I'm going to jump back here. I'm going to take the top pieces of our file here, and I'm going to cut them. So everything from the opening doc type to the opening body tag. I'm going to go to this includes, partials, and header. So these are just directories I kept in here to just basically help separate out our different file types. So partials are for visual elements and utilities or for common uh, utility elements that we need to do. So here we go. I've got underscore header. It's got everything I need inside here. However, this path to the config is now incorrect. Um, but we don't actually want that there. We want that. So we'll take that out. So I'm going to control X that. And I'm going to put that back inside our index.php. And I'm going to add a new include. Again, so we'll just include once. Only this time I can get away with just typing in underscore partials slash underscore header.php. 
And the reason I can get away with that is because the config has set up our includes path, and now I just need to reference it. So I already in this directory, so I want to access the partials directory and the header file. Then I'm going to do the same thing with these two pieces. So control X, save, open up the footer, paste. I don't know why it's important, but I want to tab that over. And then I'm going to add the include once underscore partials slash underscore footer dot PHP. And there we go. We now have our header and our footer and our style sheet. So if we jump over to our browser, we're still not really going to see anything, but they're there. We can actually tell because document has been put up top. <clears throat> so another piece we're going to create is a navigation to jump between our different files. And they're not like, it's not like many links. It's only a couple of links. So we're going to add a link in here that just points to the home. So A, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use our base path because that is our home. So it doesn't matter where we include our nav. Um, we always want to make sure we have a relative or our absolute path or absolute URL, sorry, uh, pointing to our base path. So we'll type in home here, and whatever character that is I just typed. There we go. That was interesting. And then we're going to do another one here as well. So A... Again, we're going to use the base path so that it creates an absolute path. And then this is going to go to countries. And I can do index.php if you feel that's clear. Just like up here, we could go slash index.php if you feel that's clear. And maybe I'll just leave that, but you don't actually need it because the index.php is implied. So there we go, we filled out our nav, and you're not going to see any difference in the browser because we haven't included the nav anywhere. So now we're going to take the nav and include it in our index.php. And I was going to put it in header, but you know what? We're including header everywhere we need it, so we might as well just stick it right in the header file. So I'm going to come into the header file, php include once, and again, because includes are always from the correct location, um, even though the config's not in here, you got to remember that the config is right here. So we're kind of assuming that we have everything set when we go to add the pieces we need into header. So include once uh, underscore partials slash underscore nav.php. If you find that difficult to understand, what you can do in here is you can add the config directly in here as well with using an include once and it won't include it if it's already been included but at least then you know it's in there and you're confident about it but we don't need to what we need to do is get into the habit of making some assumptions and the assumption is is that every file will have the underscore config.php in it so we shouldn't need to include it we already have those variables defined in there ready to go for us all right so now i'm going to alt tab back out to the browser, hit control R, and I've already created some styles, so you should see these this nice UR, or this nice uh, navigation, and you should be able to jump between the two files, right? So one more thing, I just wanna create a header inside here. Um, so I'm gonna do a header. There we go. And I'll put an H1 in here that just says home, sweet home. And we'll tie back out. And it doesn't look the same as the one in countries. And that's mostly because the um, we're missing a class. So we need to add a class on here. And we'll call it main heading. And then it should look the same. So with dry templating, dry templating, you know, allows us to create this very simple navigation. Um, but in addition to using dry templating to creating like navigation and headers and footers, we can also create some common utility elements as well. So this header is now available on every page that we wanted to. And I've already kind of added it to the countries for you. If you go to the countries, 
you can see that I've got the config, only now it's using the two dots to move up a directory to access it. I've got my included header. I've got my included footer. Everything's good. But now I'm also going to need to get the countries themselves, and I'm going to need to connect to the database to get that. We connect to the database a lot, like, like so much in this class. Like out of every common app, we'll probably connect at least eight times. So because of that, it makes sense to actually to take our connection and separate it out into its own file. So we're going to do that. I'm going to just collapse partials. I'm going to go to utilities, right click on utilities and choose new file. I'm going to create one called underscore connect.php. And then I'm going to create a new one called dot env.php. Okay. While I'm at it, and because I already know that's there, I'm also going to create a new file in the root of our normalizing paths called dot git ignore. And make sure you spell this exactly the way I've done because otherwise it will get ignored. And I'm going to add dot, yeah, dot env dot php into there. And you don't need to actually follow the directory path. It will just ignore any file called dot env dot php. All right. In the dot env dot php file, we should actually create our variables. You can just copy this from the other file. Um, that we created last week, but I'll write them in again. So it was put env set of quotes and it's db underscore host equals local host because this is for our local, right? And I alt shift and down a few times. This is db underscore user, which should be root. Um, because I am the only one using, or sorry, because I'm using a WAMP installation I have no password so I'm going to put DB pass but it's going to be empty and then I'm going to do DB and it's still just lesson underscore zero three we're still just using the same database so in our connect PHP we need to include this file <clears throat> so we're going to assume that the config file has been loaded um, and so because of that we can actually easy include this file or we can do it you know what let's do it the proper way actually just in case so we're going to use if file exists uh, helps if we write a php block so we'll write if file exists and we need to make sure we get the absolute url to this path so we're just going to reference the connect script there we go that gives us the directory that we're in and then we can easily just reference .env.php because they're at the same level. So this is still just an absolute URL, or sorry, an absolute path, so we'll be fine. And then we're going to require once, underscore utilities, slash .env, slash .php. So that will require the env file if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then we don't have to worry about it. Um, that's to basically cover if we deploy our code to Heroku and the .env file is missing, it won't blow up for us. We're going to create a function called connect, and then we'll just call connect anytime we want to connect. So we're going to do dollar sign $con equals mysql i connect, and this is going to seem familiar from last week, .getenv db underscore host, getenv db underscore user get env oops db underscore pass and get env env helps if we write it correctly db because we're going to be using this all the time, we can also do some error checking to make sure that we're actually getting our connections. So we can check this argument called MySQL I connect error and pass it the connection variable. <clears throat> if it's set and we actually have it, then we can just echo it out. So we'll just say echo issue connecting to MySQL. MySQL I connect error. Otherwise, we're going to return the connection string. And we should return something here as well, uh, but we'll just return a boolean of false. There we go. So everything's basically 
set up. This will be our common connection file. So this is our EMV, which contains our local credentials. This is our connection string. This is our error handling, and it's all wrapped in a nice handy function that we can just call. So any place that we need to do connections, we're going to include this. And actually, because that's almost everywhere, I'm just going to put it in the header PHP file because it just makes sense. So at the top, right above the uh, extra pieces here, I'm just going to do PHP include. Actually, you know what? It's more important. Let's do a require. Require once. And this is underscore utilities. Just watch your spelling there. Underscore connect.php. And there we go. If everything's good, we should be able to refresh and no errors. We can go to countries, we can go to home, and we've got no errors. So our connection script is there. That doesn't mean there isn't an issue with our connection script. It just means that the syntax is currently correct. If we actually go to connect, we might still have problems. We don't know yet, so we'll have to check that out. So why don't we do that next? This gets into using common presentation elements. So we've been using header and footer, which are fairly common. But I've also created a file in here called country. And the idea of country is that I can use it uh, for multiple listings or I can use it for a singular country listing. And we're going to use it in both examples. Uh, so we're going to create a just a very basic chunk of HTML. So here we go. So here's H3. I'm going to assume I have a variable called row that contains my country information. Obviously, if I don't, this will break up, or blow up, I should say. I give a p tag, dollar sign row description. Oops. And then I'm also going to create a small. Now, I've already created some CSS for this. You are welcome to obviously edit the CSS if you don't like it. I know it's not the most attractive CSS in the world. So there we go. I've got my name, my description, and my population. Like I said, though, this assumes that the variable row exists. If the variable row is missing, this file will definitely blow up. Or if these values, like these keys that we're trying to reference, don't exist, this is definitely going to blow up, right? So you got to kind of keep that in mind. This might not necessarily be the best way to do this. Uh, in fact, we could guard ourselves by doing this type of syntax, which basically says either this or just output null. So if for any reason row is defined but it's missing these pieces, then it will just spit out null. So it kind of guards us a little bit. All right. So let's uh, let's edit the countries index.php and display all our countries. And this is pretty simple. I've already added most of the stuff for you. We just need to do a connection and get our stuff. So we have config. We know connect is in header. So we can literally just call con equals connect because the function is already available to us. We can store the result. Yeah, this is actually result. MySQL I query. Pass it the connection. And then the SQL we want to run. So select star from countries, which hopefully you still have that. And then dollar sign rows was going to be equal to MySQL I fetch all. Give it the result to parse through and tell it to convert it over to a MySQL associative array. After that, we need to leap through, loop through those results. So we'll do for each dollar sign rows as dollar sign row, right, is the variable that we're making up, but we're doing it on purpose because we're going to include our partials slash underscore country dot PHP file. And it will literally include it as many times as we call this loop, right? But that's fine. That's what we want. And because row is defined, the row reference in sitecountry.php will be satisfied. So if we alt tab out to here and click on countries, got some issues. So I spelled my SQL wrong, as you can see. Happens to us all. There we go. Boom. And there's our countries. Interestingly enough, our styles are not really 
taking effect. I'm not sure why. Um, let me alt tab back and see. We have a div class called countries. I don't think I put any. Oh, yeah, I see it. We missed something in country. I actually added a class to this. Class equals country. So now that I've added that to the underscore country partial, I'm going to alt tab back. And there we go. It should look like that. You should see Iceland full of goats, population 60,000. Switzerland, nice chocolate, but only 10 people live there. Stuff like that. Cool. Home still blank and empty, but this is where it comes in kind of neat because we can actually take a singular card and put it on the front page. And what we'll do actually is we'll actually post only one, um, one result country, but we'll do it randomly. We'll select it randomly. And to do that, we're going to open up index.php, and most of this is already created for us. We've got like a huge chunk of this. We just need the connection piece. So out up here, we'll do a PHP. We'll connect to our database. We'll grab a result. So we'll do a MySQL I query, pass it the connection, and then our select statement, which is going to be select star from countries where, nope, actually we don't have a where, order by rand, which will just basically randomly order them, limit one, which means it will only return back one result, and then we can go dollar sign row equals my sequel i fetch associative result. So that will actually take that one row that's coming back, convert it into an associative array, and because it's already stored in a variable called row, we can literally get away with just doing PHP include once underscore partials slash underscore country dot PHP. So we're reusing that partial that we created in two places, one to call it multiple times, one to call it one time. And as you can see, I get a new uh, I get a card with the country in it, and every time I call it, it should be different. Sometimes it'll be the same, it just, it's based on the randomization built into the MySQL. <clears throat> so we're almost done. We have one more piece to do. So after all of this, our wonderful application, we need to move it up to GitHub. And so this seems to be a complicated topic for people. They seem to have a lot of difficulty with this. So hopefully this will kind of simplify it. So first step, go to GitHub, and everybody should have a GitHub account. If you don't, please review last week's lesson. Once you get to GitHub, if you just go to github.com and you sign in, you should be at this page, and beside repositories, you should see the new option. We're going to create a new repository. We're going to call it Comp1006. I'm going to call mine Thursday because I already have one called Comp1006. Actually, uh, why don't we call it, I'm going to call it countries, actually. I'm going to call it something completely different. I'm going to make it private. And I'm going to click Create Repository. So that's going to create my repository. The next thing I need to do is open up PowerShell in administrative mode. So make sure you open it up in administrator mode. And I need to CD into that directory. So I'm going to go to Lesson 6, Examples, Normalizing Paths. I'm going to click up here, right? Highlight it and copy it. And then I'm going to go CD and Paste. So that now I'm in that directory. Now I can call git init, which will initialize an empty directory or an empty repository in there for me. I can check git status to see what new changes need to be done. So I've got all these not being tracked or anything. So I'm going to go git add dot, which will now track all those files. I can see that by doing a git status. Then I'm going to go git commit dash m and provide a message. The so dash m says I'm providing an, a message. Init git. Now, I don't have my remote set up yet. I've only done my local stuff. If I do git status 
as you can see, everything is fine and it's happy. So locally, my repository is fine. Now I want to set up the remote repository so it connects to GitHub and pushes my code. So I'm going to go over to GitHub. I'm going to copy this URL here. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to clear my screen by hitting Control L. Then I'm going to type in git remote add origin. So those four words, every time I create a new remote, I do git remote add origin and then paste in the repository for the GitHub. Hit enter. That's done. So I know it worked. I can type in git remote dash V and I should see a fetch and a push for it. Then I'm going to set my upstream, which is going to be git push dash u origin master. And I'm going to do dash f just in case I created it with a readme or something like that. I just want to basically nuke and pave anything that's up there. It's going to take a few seconds to figure itself out. There we go. All good. So now that it's up there, I should be able to see it if I alt tab over to git and refresh. There we go. There's all my code and I have my index.php. And if I go to includes and utilities, you can see the .env file is missing, right? Because I have my git ignore working and I know it's working. All right, so now it's time to do Heroku. So I'm gonna go to Heroku. Heroku.com. I'm going to create a new application. Create a new app. I'm going to call it Countries Dash uh, Thursday. Nice. I'm going to click Create App. You might have to call yourselves Countries Dash your username and then whatever because you're going to run out of things. So when I come here, it automatically sticks me in the deploy. So you can see I'm in the deploy. I'm going to click on GitHub. I'm going to scroll down to where it says repo name and I'm going to click search. Now I have a lot of repositories, so it's going to take a few seconds to load. And when it loads, there's going to be a whole bunch in here. And I want to find countries. So there's countries. I'm going to click connect. It's going to connect the countries to it. My next step is to enable automatic deploys. So that's all done. And then I'm going to deploy the branch. Now, every time I do a push, it will auto-deploy for me going forward. There we go. Everything's good. Deployed to Heroku. I've got my green. Either I can launch it from here by clicking View, or I can click Open App. Now, right now, it's not going to work. As you can see, this is empty. Issue connecting to my SQL, no such file or directory. So that's pretty normal. And the reason why we're getting those errors is because we don't have our credentials set up for our remote database. To do that, we need to go to Settings under Heroku, Reveal Config Vars, DB underscore host, and then the name of the configuration. So give me one second, because I have it actually written down in our notes. Do, do, do. I just need to find it. <laughs> there, got it. Okay, so it's that really long comp-1006 URL that I gave you guys last week. So you need that host, the one that's for AWS. Then you're gonna have your DB user right? And your DB user is going to be whatever it is, right? So mine's a min, yours is likely DB underscore, or sorry, user underscore uh, and your student number. You're going to need your DB, right? So my DB is whatever I want to use. I'm going to just use user S McKinnon. Because I think I have the country's database there. And then you're going to need your DB pass, right? And obviously I'm not going to show you my password. I'll move that over to here. And then make sure you click add. And then when you're done, you can hide your config bar so other people can't see it. 
Okay, so they're hidden now. So if you go back to deploy, I don't know if it actually shows you. It might not. If not, you can always go to more and click view logs. And if you do that, you should see that it went down again, shut down complete, stopping all processes, state change from starting to up. And it does that because it's taking those variables and adding them in. But you won't really know that it's worked until you go to your address, hit refresh, and I've got an access denied using a password one. I don't remember what my password is, is probably why. So I'll fix that actually. So let me pause and I'll fix my credentials. All right, so those are fixed. Looks like it's starting back up again. Uh, that's the wrong one. We want this one. Click refresh. Oh, right, because it's not called user McKinnon. Hold on, I'll fix that. All right, change it to DB like it was supposed to be. Refresh, boom. All right, so I have my connection working. I don't have any countries, though. I thought I had some. Maybe I don't have any countries in that database that is quite likely actually that I am missing countries in the database uh, let's create some I mean it doesn't take much right actually let's double check that I don't have any countries yeah you see it's completely empty right so we can just insert into countries name I don't even care about the well, description is kind of handy to have, isn't it? Description, population, the values of Canada, very cold, and 37 million people. We'll create another one too just so I can see it. Sweden, chocolate, I mean, they also have skiing, don't they? And 10 people. We'll run those two, they both are inserted. So now if I jump back to the database, hit Control R, yay, Canada and Sweden, they're there. And home chooses Sweden. I wonder if I'll choose the same one almost every time. Oh, there we go. Right, so everything's running on Heroku, so that means everything is good. So, like I said, I'll post up some cheat sheets so that this should help you out going forward, uh, so that you know exactly the steps to take to be able to deploy. You can bring those cheat sheets to the test. Oh, that reminds me, the test. Let's talk about the test. All this stuff is sitting on um, SCM Education, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to find. But... Here's basically how the test is going to work. So also there is a lab, follow the lab for full points. I'll push the lab to the end of reading week. So you'll have quite a bit of time to do it. Oh, what to expect. You will be given three hours to create a small application. So there'll be multiple scenarios. Everybody should basically wind up with a unique scenario. I will give you your scenario and you'll have three hours to complete your scenario. You can Get help from other colleagues, that's totally fine. However, what you cannot do is copy and paste code from them. So they can't give you their connection script and you copy and paste it in place. They can't give you their solution to solving something else and you copy and paste it in place. However, you cannot talk to them, you can ask them questions, that is totally fine. Any copying and pasting that I find will be removed from your files and you'll receive a zero. Okay, so just make sure you understand that concept. If you have any questions, please ask me. Um, because you can use your notes, you can use the internet, you can basically do anything. The only thing unavailable for you is me. You can't ask me. You can't ask me questions about the files. The only time you are allowed to ask me questions is if you have issues with GitHub um, or Heroku, and only if they're failing, and it's them, not you. Like, it's something to do with them. And if that's the case, then I'll likely get you to push your code to Blackboard and hand it in that way. Um, I do mark partial code, so even if it's not working, uh, you can still hand in what you have. Make sure it's on GitHub. Uh, some tips. Be on time, right? Because you only get the three hours. If you're late, you don't get extra time. 
Practice creating a simple CRUD application. So we've created the CRUD application a few times now. So practice doing that. Practice using GitHub as well as deploying to Heroku. Practice reading the logs underneath Heroku as well as reading the logs that come to you from your application. Do not ask for help when you have a log message because I won't help you. The log message does tell you exactly what's wrong. You need to read the message. Um, practice uh, also study, study, study. Make sure you study. Three hours seems like a long time when you have support for multiple uh, people and multiple resources, but it really isn't. A lot of people run out of time with even just very basic applications. Um, I do it in a half hour. If I can do it in a half hour, I expect you to be able to do it in an hour and a half. You have three hours, and in the past, I've had students run out of time every time, and it's always the same type of students. It's always students who don't study, and that just tends to be the issue, and unfortunately, I can't, I'm not going to forgive that. So um, make sure you look over your examples that you've been working on for the past six weeks. Nothing on this test will be um, something you haven't done before. It will all be stuff you've done. So it should just be familiar to you. Okay. The lab six is including a normalizing paths. Make sure you download lab six, follow the instructions and yeah, you should have no issue. And then you're going to deploy it to GitHub and sorry, you're going to push to GitHub and deploy to Heroku. So that'll also give you some chance to practice with that as well. Any questions, you know how to contact me through Slack or by email. Uh, Slack is much faster than email, obviously. Uh, other than that, I hope everybody has a great reading week, um, and I'll see you guys next week, actually, on Thursday, and then you'll have a great reading week. All right. Cheers.